This latest offering from Osprey War Games is written by Dan Mersey and Michael Legg. Firmly in the mould of Dan Mersey's previous Osprey rules, lying rampant, with the action moved from the Middle Ages to the period of the Pikemen, 1590 to around 1660. At the core of the game is the creation of a leader for your company, the officer, who represents the player on the tabletop. There are a number of traits and abilities that can be picked from charts, but the rules encourage the player to roll these up randomly at the beginning of the game. Officers all have a number of attributes that they share, and their abilities are further enhanced by traits and officer background. Once the officer is ready, you need to recruit a company, the standard size for which is between 40 and 60 models, based on a point system, with the average company costing about 24 points. Multiplayer options are dealt with early on, with the rule suggestions for two to three players per side. The unit profiles will again be familiar to players of Lion Rampant, with pretty standard stats like attack and move etc. And so too with the activation system, which is alluded to here and covered in more detail later. The standard troop types of the period are here, with gallopers, dragoons, pikemen, shot or musketeers and regimental guns. The rule system uses six-sided dice, with the activation of units being a key to getting anything done. Players aim to achieve the appropriate stat score for a task in order to activate their units to do stuff. If able to activate, a unit can move, shoot, attack or more, depending on the player's requirements. Some units may also skirmish or caracal, whereupon a mounted unit with pistols may charge in, fire and retire. The end of a player's phase comes based on a number of possible conditions being met, including the roll of a double one or double six, which indicates, as the rules say, your officer might have made a fool out of himself, or maybe managed to perform a really heroic deed. This then constitutes a roll on the double one or double six table. The all-important unit cohesion rules are covered here, which tell us that individual models move independently, but that all models must be within three inches of a designated model in the unit, probably a standard bearer or captain. The next section of the rules covers shooting and melee. In order to hit, 12 dice are rolled if the attacking unit is above half strength, or 6 if the attacker is below. This formula will again be familiar to players of Lion or Dragon Rampant, with casualties being removed based on dice scores compared against the target's stamina. Morale tests are an integral part of the rules, with failure resulting in a unit wavering or having to retreat. The game is very much scenario or mission led, so a number of these are provided in the book with full rules for objectives etc. A number of sample companies are featured over these pages, covering everything from the Thirty Years War through to the English Civil War, the Deluge and up to the Great Northern War. An officer's roster and company roster are included in the book, although there's no quick reference sheet. As has become the norm with Osprey Blue Books, we get to see some top quality Osprey art and nice looking photos throughout. Although it would be good to see figures doing what is discussed in the rules rather than just looking pretty. As the author says in his notes at the beginning of the book, our design goal has been to successfully rework the lion rampant medieval wargaming rules to represent this next evolution of historical warfare. Many of the rules remain the same. We are not trying to reinvent the wheel. For fans of the Lion Rampant system, this is great news. A new period to game using rules we already like. For gamers new to the system who perhaps weren't interested in the medieval period, but whose interest lies in pike and shot, then I would certainly give these rules a try if you're looking to game large skirmish in the period. Their focus upon rules rather than oodles of history is perhaps one of the main selling points of this Osprey series. Rather than encouraging you to wade through reams of history, they get you to reenact it with toy soldiers.